Parshas Vayichi, Shabbos Chazak. Could you believe Shabbos Chazak? It seems like yesterday we were saying that now we'll be beginning Bereshis, say the Bereshis, and we're going to learn all about the Avois, the Moish, the Shvatim. And here we are, Shabbos Chazak. Next week already we'll be discussing Mitzrayim, Moish Rabbeinu. And uh, I hope that over the past couple of months that we've been able to inspire you a little bit that we should grow and learn the lessons that we needed to learn from the Avois, the Mois, and the Shvatim. But for a grand finale, we have a great lesson from the Nesiva Shalom this week. Very, very beautiful, beautiful thought on this week's Parsha. Beginning of the Parsha by Yechi Yaakov Be'eret Mitzrayim Shavai Esrei Shana Yaakov Avinu lived in Mitzrayim for 17 years Vayihi Yimei Yaakov Shnei Chayov The years of Yaakov Avinu's life Sheva Shonim Varboim Umaas Shana That Yaakov Avinu was 147 years old So the Ziva Shalom here at the beginning of the parasha teaches us a beautiful, beautiful lesson in how a person should really go about living their life and especially through the times where we perceive that things are not exactly how we would have liked things to go. And a beautiful lesson, how we go about that. Why does the Apostle need to tell us, as the Nesiva Shalom, that Yaakov Avinu lived in Mitzrayim for 17 years? We can just say, that Yaakov Avinu was 147 years old. It says before that Yaakov Avinu was 130 years old when he came down to Mitzrayim. So if I tell you that Yaakov is 147 years old, right? I'm telling you he's 147 years old now. So most people can figure out that if he was 130 when he came down to Mitzrayim, and now he was 147, so even if you have to pull off your socks and shoes to count, use your hands and your toes, you understand. You can figure it out that it's, uh, that it's 17 years that Yaakov Avinu lived in Mitzrayim. Why does the Torah have to explicitly tell us that Yaakov lived in Mitzrayim at this point for 17 years? Zokta Nesiva Shalom, a beautiful, beautiful idea. And he says, you know what, 17, the number 17, there is a word that's gematria 17, that adds up to 17, and that is the word toy. The word good, 9 plus 6 plus 2, adds up to 17. And that's the word toy, good. And the Sivashalom tells us that that teaches us, 17 equals toy teaches us, that Yaakov Avinu, every day that he had to be in Mitzrayim, he always saw the good. There was a lot of bad stuff going on. They were in Golos. There were things going on around them which were less than ideal. But Yaakov Avinu, Komad Ovid, Rachman Letav Ovid. Whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu was throwing their way was for the best, was for, good, was, was for the good. It was all toy. It was all good. So the Torah tells us Yaakov Avinu lived in Mitzrayim 17 years. He lived the life of Toy. That is the way Yaakov lived his life. That everything was always for the best. He lived in Mitzrayim. That Yaakov Mitzrayim. He lived in a Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim comes from Mitzar, like Mina Mitzar Korosika. Yaakov Avinu lived in a much less than ideal situation. Yet, he lived the way of Shiva Esrei. He lived the way of 17. He lived the way of Toy. And with this idea, we could also understand another Maimar Chazal in this week's Parsha. Chazal tell us that Kevon Shenifter Yaakov. When Yaakov Avinu was nifter, nistumu einehem velibam shal Yisrael. So to speak, the eyes and the hearts of every member of Kla Yisrael was nistumu. It was closed. Mipnei hatzorois v'koishi hashibo. 
that Yaakov Avinu was Nifter, and now Nistamu, their eyes and their hearts were closed from the troubles and the Shebud in Mitzrayim. Now, the question is, of course there were troubles before Yaakov Avinu was Nifter too. Mitzrayim was not such a great place to live. It really never was. So there was trouble before. Why was it only when Yaakov Avinu was Nifter that the Medrash tells us that they, were, they became closed and their hearts and their minds, everything was closed. Things were then no good when Yaakov was Nifter. Why is that? It was not so good before Yaakov was Nifter. With the Pshat that we said, we can understand, and with this it's really, really beautiful. That up to this point, up until Yaakov Avinu was Nifter, it was Vayechi Yaakov. And from Eloshim in last week's parsha, Vatechi Ruach Yaakov Avim. You know what? It was Vayechi Yaakov. Even though there were troubles in Mitzrayim, Yaakov Avinu was always full of life. And he was mekabel everything with a chiyos and with a simcha. By a chi yakoi, but the chi ruach Yaakov Avim. Of course there were troubles before Yaakov Avim was nifter. But Yaakov showed us how to live your life. If things are not exactly as you would want them, if, seem, if life seems to be throwing troubles and sorrows in your way, we live with the ideal and the idea that komada avin rachman on the top of it. It is always toy. So it was Vayechi Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu was alive. He had a simcha. And he understood that that is the derech to live your life. And that's the derech that he instilled in Kla Yisrael. Therefore, they did not feel the tzoros of Mitzrayim because Yaakov Avinu injected that chios, that life into them. They did not feel the tzoros. And only after Yaakov Avinu was nifter, was there nistimu eneim belivam shal Yisrael? That now it was closed. And Yaakov Avinu was the one who showed them how to live with Komad Ovid Rachmana, Litav Ovid. And as we have mentioned in the past from the Torah Sa'ovois, the Siva Sholem brings down, we've mentioned this numerous times, that when a person is Mekabal, the way of Hashem, you're Mekabal, everything that HaKadosh Baruch Hu throws your way, so too Hashem Tzilcha. Hashem is your reflection. Hashem accepts you when you are acting not exactly the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu would want you to act. So Mida connected Mida. If we are accepting in everything that Hashem throws our way, Hashem accepts us also when we do not fall exactly into line. And Kla Yisrael, in that way, they were able to survive the Golas. Wherever you are, and whatever happening, we accept the ways of Hashem. And the Siva Shalom tells us that this is also a tremendous ticket. It's an idea, he says. It's a tremendous ticket for things that normally, he says the Siva Shalom, normally tshuva would not be good enough, tshuva would not suffice, it would not help to remedy a certain situation. If a person does this, if you train yourself to accept everything that Hashem does to you, it's a tremendous ta'elas and a tremendous tikkun for a person. Everybody, every person can think about how to fit that into their own life. It's also brought down from the chart of the Chusiyot and Aleinu that the beginning of Parshas Vayechi, if you look in the Torah, you see that Parshas Vayechi, there is no space as there would be between one parsha, every other parsha in the Torah and the next parsha. There's just a space of one letter between parshas Vayigash and Vayechi. And if you look in the Torah, you'll see that. There is no space there. Says the Chagam, as the Chizyad also brought down in the Siva Shalom, that it's telling us that when we might go through a tough time, we're talking about tough times now and how to deal with it, when we, when every person might go through a tough time, just know that the Torah is also closed. Like we said in the last year, that Kadosh Baruch Hu is always with us. He never leaves us out there on our own. We accept what Kadosh Baruch Hu does and Kadosh Baruch Hu helps us. Hashem is in the Torah with you. And we have to always know that. We have to always remember that. Tzara Yisrael was in a Tzara now, in Mitzrayim. 
So Parshas Vayigash and Parshas Vayechi, Nistamu, it's closed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying, you're the Tzara, I'm closed too. I am going to be in that Tzara with you. And being that this is uh, Shabbos Chazak, I'm going to do something that we don't, do not do very often, and we're going to veer usually 100% of the year, beginning to end, is totally from the Nesiva Shalom. But I heard something so powerful this week, something so unbelievable from Rav Wolfson Shlita, that I think that as a Shabbos Chazak, as a Chizuk, it's something very, very beautiful for us to hear. And you know that what's been going on a little bit in the current events the past couple of weeks, and more of it is coming our way in a couple of days, what's going on with Eretz Yisrael, that basically all the nations of the world, people were extremely, extremely upset at our president, who is Baruch Hashem on his way out the door, and uh, we have coming our way again in another few days, people are very, very upset with the idea that basically they're claiming that the entire Eretz Yisrael is occupied territory. We do not belong there. That the Yidin, the Jews, do not belong in Eretz Yisrael. And it's a tremendous, tremendous chutzpah, and everybody has what to say about it. But Rav Wilson said, you know what, when this happened, he said that it's an extremely, extremely powerful lesson of emuna and chizit for every year. And he said, you know what, let me tell you why. And we spoke about this in Parshish, Bereshish a little bit, and that was Pakat Naziv Shalom. But the first Rashi in the Torah, Rashi tells us, why do we start the Torah, Rashi gives a couple of reasons of why we start the Torah with Bereshish Bar Elikim. Why don't we start the Torah with the mitzvahs of the Torah, with Achayi Shazel Chen Parshish Boy? And Rashi tells us that one of the reasons is, is that there's going to come a time that the Umay Sa'aylam, the nations of the world, are going to come and say to Klal Yisrael, everything that you have is stolen. Everything, nothing belongs to you. Rav Wolfson said, up until now, until this time, they used to tell us, okay, the West Bank doesn't belong to you, the North, the Golan doesn't belong to you, the South doesn't belong to you, but they left us with something. Now they're telling us basically nothing is yours. That's Rashi. That's what this is going on right now. They're telling us it's so the Torah starts with Bereshis, says Rashi to tell us that Akash Baruch was saying, just like I created the world, I can decide who Eretz Yisrael belongs to at this time. It's up to me. I created the world. So before you think you lived in Eretz Yisrael, now I'm telling you it belongs to Klai Yisrael. And up until this point, now the world is telling us that nothing belongs to you. And he says that is followed in the Torah, V'ruach merachefes al p'nei ha'mayim. That there's going to be a wind. That wind, V'ruach merachefes al p'nei ha'mayim, is referring to the winds of Mashiach. That when that happens, it means that the time for Gula is coming close that things are going to change. There's going to be a different air in the world. And whatever we hear, whatever happens this week, whatever garbage they talk about over there in the cesspool known as the UN so in New York, there is nothing that moves a year. We have a Kaddish Baruch on our side. And that's what Rashi was telling us there. The first Rashi in the Torah is telling us Hashem decides who it belongs to. No one else decides. Hashem decides. And let, let this taka be a chizit for us that we're finishing Bereshis. The first Rashi, beginning of Bereshis. Now we're finishing Bereshis. Let's learn that lesson. Let's internalize. It's not up to any person in the world. It's up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's use this as a chizit. Chazak, chazak, and it's chazik. We should taka be zoicha to internalize this chizit.